Hey there, how's it going? That Logic Pro guy here. I do have a confession to make, even though I love Logic Pro and it's just giving me so much life. There was a time when I was using Ableton. I was in between jobs and I thought to myself, let me just check out what Ableton's all about. And there were two things that I noticed that were really, really cool. One of them I covered on my other channel, link in the description. It has to do with automation. Check it out. The second was a nifty little plugin called Bass Mono. First glance, you look at it, you're thinking, this is just a utility plugin, no big deal. But let me tell you, the implications are a many. I think some of you know I'm releasing my first plugin. It's coming out early next week. But for all that Logic Pro guy followers, I have a massive surprise for you. I've got a free plugin called the Util. It's based on that Ableton plugin that I worked with so many years ago. We don't have anything like it within the Logic Pro ecosystem. And so I decided to create something like it myself. It's a really cool plugin and I wanna show you how it works, okay? Let me go ahead and play this song that I finished for a publisher. And let's go ahead and look at the overall short term LUFs. Here we go. All right, let's call it negative 8.5. Let's go ahead and reduce negative two decibels of gain. We'll add a little bit of stereo width just to get everything to fit in the stereo image. And then I will make everything below 300 hertz mono compatible. Let's see how this changes our overall luffs. So you can see it didn't really do that much, negative 8.9. How is it that I'm reducing gain structure and yet not seeing a big change in terms of my short-term LUFS, which is a three-second window? And the answer is a little complicated. You see, when we're talking about stereo width, we have to look at it in terms of how it's going to affect loudness. And this all depends on where you position the plugin. This is exactly why I placed the width after gain, because widening the stereo image is going to move the sound energy to the sides of a mix. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to affect the total perceived loudness. This usually happens when you boost the overall mix, and this can be boosting in terms of EQ changes, saturation, distortion, things like that. Now, what's interesting about stereo width is that a wider mix might actually require more compression or limiting to control peaks. And this does increase the overall perceived loudness or luffs, which basically makes it sound louder. So this is actually what's going on in this mix. Because I have the util instantiated early on my mastering chain, when I increased the width, not only did it get wider and positioned things in my mix, but it actually got louder as well. Let's go ahead and check that out in real time. This time I will mute the master just so we can talk numbers. I'll press play. And as you can see, we're at about negative 9.5. And as I increase this, let's just go to 150. You can see that we're at about negative 8.5. So the placement of your stereo imager is critical to your mix success, making sure that you get the exact sound that you want. And I want to illustrate this by placing the util right before the limiter. So same settings, nothing changes. And let's see where we are now. So very interesting. Now we're at negative 10.2 right before the limiting stage. And that's where that negative 2 dB gain is being hit, right? Because look, let me go ahead and bypass it and you'll see this. Negative 8.5, so we should see this go to about 
negative 10.5. Let's check this out. <laughs> So that's close, and now when I add the imaging, which I just took away, check it out. So this is a fascinating conversation. I'm not claiming to know everything about audio. I am claiming to love everything about music production, Logic Pro, and uh, I, I just love what audio is capable of. I, I geek out over how amazing this is. So let me drop the mono compatibility to 200 hertz. Let's see how that affects the overall mix. <laughs> sudden things got a lot louder we got to about negative 9.5 let's go ahead and bring up that mono compatibility i usually set it to about 180 200 but let's see where we're at now <laughs> negative 10.5 so one decibel of potential LUFS that could be utilized within your master. There are different ways to use the Util plugin, but for now, let's just keep it there. If you're interested in downloading it for free, go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. This will be made available uh, in bundles. I have a whole sale going on this weekend if you guys are interested in buying my new plugin, which will be revealed very soon on my other channel. But thank you guys so much for the support. Be careful where you decide to place your imager and be careful to pay attention to your gain structure as that will affect the width and of course the width will affect how everything else is being hit within your master track. I hope you enjoyed that conversation and uh, maybe we can share some thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about this. Where do you place your imager? Do you place it early on in the chain, later in the chain. Let me know what works and what doesn't for you. And uh, please start paying attention to this concept of mono compatibility because it can get you an extra one, two dBs of extra loudness and umph within your masters. All right, that Logic Pro guy out. See you later.